Okay, we have some breaking news in the Paul Manafort trial. We have Colin Kalmbacker covering this for us live. Hi, Chris. Hey, Colin. Great to see you again. You too. So what's the latest? Give us the update. Um, basically, we are more or less done for the day with any type of a uh, substantive issue. There are going to be some procedural motions hashed out between the government, the court, and the defense, but the defense has rested their case. They are not going to mount a defense. Paul Manafort spoke for, I believe, the first time, addressed the, the court, uh, told Judge Ellis that he understands his rights, that he is satisfied with his counsel, that he has made a decision on whether or not to testify, and that he has decided he will not be testifying. And with that, the defense has decided not to risk the ire of Judge Ellis' sarcasm being directed towards them. That's apparently the way things work. When you're trying the case, Judge Ellis is a little harsher on you, so I suppose the defense doesn't want that to be the last thing in the jury's mind for uh, closing arguments. And so we are going to start with those tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. here in the Eastern District of Virginia. So tomorrow morning you'll be there covering closing arguments? Yes, yes, I will. Okay, so I'm sure we'll get an update there. How do you think it's going if you were to take a guess? Uh, if I were to take a guess, well, I guess we can just try to auger out from what just happened. The defense, of course, moved to have everything uh, dismissed under a Rule 29 motion under the rules of federal criminal procedure. Um, after a bit of hashing that stuff out, um, Judge Ellis was sympathetic to the argument, but ultimately decided that it was a good argument good enough for the jury to decide. So if I had to wager at this point, um, one of here's, here's me giving strictly an opinion. The case looked really great before they even got Rick Gates and the secret life, life of Rick Gates in London and his flat with his mistresses, however many there were. The, def uh, the prosecution's case looked pretty good before that. If they can convince the jury, make the jury actually understand that case, the jury doesn't have all the hindsight and all the extra news pieces and analysis that we do, of course. So if the jury understands what the prosecution did before, up to and including Rick Gates, uh, even taking Rick Gates out of the equation because maybe he's not the most credible witness, it's not looking great for Paul Manafort. And he still has that trial hanging over his head in Washington, D.C. Right. Well, and it's clear it wasn't looking uh, great for Paul Manafort when the prosecution put on its case. But now that the defense has put on their case, do you think that that um, helped uh, cast doubts in the prosecution's case or any kind of reasonable doubt? Um, or do you think it was more uh, just to show that they're going through the motions and getting his day in court? Well, the, just, to, just to clarify, the defense's case has more or less been responding to the prosecution's case. They've decided not to call. I believe they had 12 um, or a dozen or so witnesses on tap. They're not calling any witnesses. They're going straight to they're, they're dealing with a couple of procedural issues, as I mentioned, today for the rest of the day. And then we're going straight to closing arguments. So it's, uh, it's going to be a matter of rhetoric at the end here. So sometimes course, when the prosecution puts on their case, it's a strong case. And then when the defense puts on their case, it gets a little bit uh, weaker. Do you think that after the defense's case went on that the prosecution's case weakened or strengthened? Um, well, I, just, 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 just to clarify, the defense really didn't do anything. I just want to make that clear to but our But they don't our have viewers. to. They just have they, to respond and cast doubt. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so you're talking about their responses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they were able to, I, I would say, strike a, a few points. Uh, as mentioned, Rick Gates is maybe not the most credible witness in the world. Nobody likes people who cheat on their wives. Nobody likes people who embezzle from their bosses. Right. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe things are turning uh, the corner in that. Uh, people don't like their bosses an awful lot on any given day. Uh, but uh, all that aside, I would say maybe the best thing that the defense was able to do was to make the argument, and again, Judge Ellis said this was a pretty decent argument um, today, that, that one of the loans that Paul Manafort applied for that loan was in the bag, uh, in the bank, so to speak, uh, before he even made any false representations, if that is in fact what happened, because there was some sort of an understood quid pro quo that the uh, CEO of that bank may have a spot waiting for him in the Trump administration. So because of that, the defense is arguing that anything that Paul Manafort or any of his, um, I guess, um, accomplices may or may not have falsely represented to the bank doesn't matter because he was going to get that loan anyway. Maybe not the best argument in the world. Judge Ellis thought it was okay, but ultimately the jury's going to decide. Like I said, the motion to have that count dismissed because there was maybe not a material, um, uh, I guess, connection to the 
alleged falsities um, because the loan was in the bag. So we'll see. All right, Colin, thank you for the update. Great analysis. Course, and thanks for keeping us up to date. We'll look forward to talking to you tomorrow as well uh, after those closing well. arguments. But we have to go to a quick break. Um, so we're going to continue to follow this and a couple other trials here on the network. So stay with us and we'll be right back.